I'm Carmela Davis, National President of AMBUX 2022-2023. What is your responsibility as a treasurer? So this is a training video to help you as a treasurer. You are the financial officer of the chapter and is responsible for the chapter's financial records and safeguarding of the chapter funds. You should manage the chapter's bank account, financial reports to the chapter board, create an annual budget, and make copies of invoices, receipts, and reimbursements, collect members' dues, and make payments to the national AMBUX and the district if applicable and the region. The treasurer may be responsible for ensuring the corporate status of the chapter intact and make sure that you're up to date with annual fines that they are met. And keep in mind on your chapter bank account, you could have one, two, or many bank accounts. That is up to your chapter how many accounts that you have. You are responsible for reporting all those accounts. What is it about the tax and charitable status? You, as the National AMBUX, we are a 501c3 with a group tax exemption form that covers all chapters. Each chapter has its separate EIN number, which is employer identification number. Chapter taxes are due if your year end is May 31st, your 990 is due October 15th. Of course, you can file an extension. If your year end is December 31st, your 990 is due May 15th. And of course, you can file an extension. Now, what kind of 990 will you have to file? If your chapter receipts are less than $50,000 for the year, you can file it on an e-postcard. It's a very simple process, but if it's the first time you've done it, if you get a little nervous, please contact us and we will help you through it. If your gross receipts for your chapter are in excess of $50,000, you will need to file a Form 990 and or 990EC. It is a little bit more intel and difficult to do, but you may reach out to somebody in your chapter who can assist you. Maybe you have a CPA in your chapter. Maybe you have a CPA friend that would assist you. Please do me a favor and make sure that you ask how much is this 990 going to cost you? Because as a nonprofit organization, we want to make sure that you pay very minimal amount for that. But how important is this 990? It's extremely important. If you do not make sure your 990 is filed, your chapter can lose its charitable status with the IRS. Don't panic. If you happen to be late, there is a late fee, and those can be substantial in themselves. Do not just automatically pay that late fee. If you get that notice, please contact the IRS and explain why you were late. Maybe it's your first year of being a treasurer. Maybe you were first year chapter. Maybe you weren't aware of it. They do have sympathy there and tell them that your chapter has very minimal funds and this is a very um, extreme expense to your chapter. 99% of those times they will pay that penalty. If you need assistance in that, please reach out to myself or the resource center and we will help you in regards to that. The main thing is even if you're late, it's better to be late than not at all. What do you do as treasurer in managing chapter finances? You as your incoming president and chapter treasurer should review your previous chapter income and expenses. Once you take over, it is your responsibility. You need to make, make sure you understand the financial position and situation that your chapter has. At the end of the year, you may want to give all your information to an audit committee. Remember, that does not necessarily mean a CPA is going to come in and audit. Again, depending on your chapter and the state that you're located, it may mean that you have two or three members of your chapter that are going to be on the audit committee and we look at the information. What will they need to look at? They'll need to look at your chapter checkbook. They'll need to look at the bank statements and reconciliations. They'll need to look at the invoices and statements that you paid, along with your financial statements that you presented every month to the board meeting, and a copy of your 990 or proof that you filed the 990. These reports should be given to the board every month when you meet. Each chapter should have policies in place of how to address your finances and how they are supposed to be examined and reported. Your bank statements, financial reports, and reconciliation reports, again, should be presented to the board on a monthly basis. You may have a chapter policy that requires two signatures on every check. You may have a chapter policy that requires two signatures if the check is in excess of $500 for a different amount. Whatever works for your chapter is what is important. Whatever is easy for your chapter. 
you may keep a board member on that chapter checkbook at all times along with the treasure where the changing of the position is not detrimental. You may, mean, <clears throat> if you take any cash receipts in at a particular fundraiser, etc., please make sure that two members count those cash receipts and that it's initial and recorded. That just opens the door if you're not careful with cash for a potential embezzlement. So please be careful. You are the keeper of the funds and you need to make sure that you can account for all of them. Deposit slips should include where did the deposit money come from? Did it come from a fundraiser? Did it come from a grant because it's applicable for certain expenses? Did it come from a sponsor that wants the money only to go to Amtrak's or scholarships? Or did it come from dues that is going to go into your operating expense? That is very important to make sure you know where that money came from and what it's for. Keep in mind, again, it's unpleasant to have any embezzlement happen. You need to protect your chapter and your trust of your members and donors with transparent policies. That is very important. You have operating and designated expenses. What does that mean? Operating expenses are your chapter dues, your chapter operating expenses, program expenses, conference expenses, supplies and socials. Those are basically all operating funds. Then you have your designated funds, which can be your fundraiser earnings, your donations, Amtrak funds, ramp funds, scholarship funds, community service expenses. This can all be both operating and designated funds and can be in one bank account. You just need to make sure you account and recognize the different funds. Or you may want several separate funds. Maybe your chapter wants an operating account. Maybe they want a separate fundraising account. Not necessarily a different account for every fundraiser, but overall a fundraising account. Maybe you have certain ex um, expenses that need to come out because of a grant and you may want a project account that accounts for those that are to do with just that grant or that allocation of certain donations. Maybe you want a separate Amtrak fund because you have some sponsors that say, I want my money only to go to Amtraks, and maybe it's easier for your chapter to have a separate fund for that. Maybe your chapter wants a special conference fund, a separate big cap fund, or even down to the ramps and scholarships. Again, keep it simple for your level and what is easiest for your chapter. Every chapter is different, and it's based on what your board members would like to see. Keep in mind that you as the treasurer should keep up with the monthly financials, where you are with revenue and expenses, how much money did we take in this month, how much money went out, what is our ending and beginning balance so that your board members can see this, what are our new members' invoices, what's our drop member confirmation, and where are we at on accounts receivable meaning how many members still owe you money. What is that? So that your board can see who is delinquent on paying their dues. What are your dues? Again, depend on what your chapter wants to how they want to, to bill out dues. It could include meals. Maybe not include meals. Maybe it includes the monthly um, amount that you're going to send to um, living endowment or ability or cornerstone. Maybe it only includes just the amount that is for national dues and regional. Again, that is definitely up to your chapter how much you want to charge. Maybe you charge a social fee with your dues. Maybe you have each member pay for their own. Maybe you have a full member and an associate member. Again, these are all up to your chapter how you want to do that. What's so important about a budget? You want to prepare the budget at the beginning of the year that includes the income and expenses that you'll be having for that year. You want your chapter board and potentially your chapter members to approve that. The budget can be prepared by the chapter treasurer or you might have a finance committee that prepares it and the treasurer looks over it or all three. This should be based on past chapter and committee expenses and planned activities for the year as those can change at any time. Remember if you have approved operating expenses from the budget then those can be paid throughout the year. But if there's some unapproved expenses, these must be approved by the chapter board and or the membership. Again, that's based on your bylaws. Is the chapter board enough to approve this? And the membership just gets to know this information. Again, maybe each board meeting, you go through the necessary expenses that have come up, whether it's Amtrak expenses, whether it's a ramp, whether it's money to a certain nonprofit, 
and vote on that. With the approval of that, then the treasurer could write those checks. Again, what are the national dues and fees? Fees for a new or reinstated member is $10 a year. Chapter liability insurance is $26 a quarter or $104 annually. Many events require this liability insurance and now you want to give them that certificate that makes them feel comfortable in the fundraiser or the event that you're putting on. National dues are $25 a year, but they're billed $6.25 a quarter. Your chapter can actually prepay for that if you wish for your members if you want to go ahead and not hold that money if you're billing your chapter members that as well. Big Hat dues, you are charged $10 a year for every active Big Hat member. Friends dues, what is Friends membership? Friends membership is $25 a year and it can be billed to the individual, the chapter, or the sponsor. When might you have a Friends membership? Maybe you have a speaker you want to give a friend's membership to. Maybe you have a sponsor, somebody that's giving you money on a yearly basis or, or monthly basis that you want to make a friend's member. That comes from national, and that means they receive a national magazine every quarter and the monthly newsletter. It keeps them abreast of what Ambox is all about. So maybe later, that friend's member may want to become a member of your local chapter. If nothing else, it keeps them abreast of what Inbox is all about, and maybe they'll continue to give you some sponsorship money or feel very privileged that they are part of that. Amtrak invoices are billed to you upon when the product is shipped, and those are due within 30 days. So keep in mind, the national dues are due within 30 days as well. If you're delinquent for more than unpaid for more than a, a quarter, that chapter can lose its good standing and is not eligible to vote at national conference or order Amtrak's. That is important that you do not want to get delinquent on your chapter dues to national. Again, your chapter dues, as I stated earlier, are what you want to come up with on your chapter to what can cover your operating expenses, maybe your regional and, of course, regional and district dues, maybe your meeting meals, maybe conference expenses, and maybe, again, to help um, the 100% giving to the living endowment and billeting and cornerstone program, which is based on $40 per member. That maybe you want to include that, maybe you don't. Chapters may use their dues to fund overhead expenses such as postage and speaker gifts, conference expenses, maybe some socials. They may choose to collect fees for this, either have a fundraiser for some of that, or maybe sell tickets for it. Chapter bills again, dues, again, you can bill your chapter dues annually quarterly, or monthly, however you wish to do, as long as, again, you pay those national dues and fees. Make sure you report any dues that are delinquent to your board so your members or your board knows who is behind on paying. That's very important as well. Now, what are some other resources out there for you as a treasurer? If you go to the membership hub, there's quite a bit of resources for your availability. There's the chapter treasurer guidelines goes in a little bit more detail than we spoke today, but they're there if you want to print that form and look back over them. It's highly suggested a lot of people like to see the actual data in their hand and have that as a guidance. That's what it is, treasure guidelines. There's also the chapter bylaws. Now your chapter bylaws may be different from this that's out there. Keep that in mind, you need to understand and know what your chapter bylaws are. There's also the chapter toolkit. It's great information for you to have as treasurer as well. There's also a sample chart chapter budget. So if you've never done a budget before, a little confused on what to do, there's a great sample out there for you to use as an original guideline. There's also the IRS Form 990. And again, that can seem confusing and, and a little bit over your head. Please do again, do not hesitate to contact myself, any of your regional directors, or the resource center when you get to doing your 990. <clears throat> And there's a sample of monthly financial reports. Again, you can keep up with this information on QuickBooks and Excel by hand or in Quicken. Whatever form that you want to do, make sure that it's easy for access and that you can transfer this data onto the next treasure. Even if it's in, in um, manual format, as long as they can see that too, so they know what you've done, so they can carry that on into their year. We hope that this helps you as a treasurer 
Again, do not ever hesitate to ask questions. That is what the regional and the, the national board is for, for you, and the office, the resource center is for. We're here to help you make your job as treasurer very successful. We appreciate your time and effort. Thank you. Have a good day.